As news editor of BoardGameGeek, I see a lot of new games, and the press releases and information that I receive from publishers and designers and other sources often emphasize a feature or mechanism in a game design that has presumably never been seen before or existed quite in this manner, and this new feature will deliver to you, the player, an experience that, presumably, you have never had before. Therefore, you should investigate this game and buy it, try it out, and experience this newness for yourself. Now, this is a promise that is delivered quite often when new games are announced, but newness is not necessarily all that it's cracked up to be. Sometimes you just need to have something that works the right way. And maybe it's not new, but it delivers an experience that is what you want at the right time and that maybe is new to you without still being new. And with that in mind, let me give an introduction to Doodle Dash, a party game for three to seven players by designers Buvarp and Svensson. Only the last names are given because there are three Buvarps and two Svenssons credited in the rules, so keep it simple on the cover. This game is from new Norwegian publisher Chili Fox Games that is debuting with two titles in 2021. This is a party game in which you are drawing and guessing things. You have probably played a party game in which you are drawing and guessing things. So, does this game deliver something new? Let me explain how it works and you can decide for yourself. Here are the components of Doodle Dash, seven dry erase markers and boards, some point tokens, a deck of 70 cards, a large wooden cylinder, and a die. You're going to take two cards per player or in a three or four player game, you'll take 12 cards and you'll play through those cards, scoring points along the way and whoever ends up with the most points wins. Each card shows seven items on it, with one item being asterisk to show that it is both harder to draw and harder to guess. So one player each round is going to be the guesser. They will not see that card. Let me put that one aside. You're going to be the guesser here. You give a number from one to seven. Each other player will look at that thing. So let's say you do number four. We all look at it when we're all ready. Put down this card, everyone takes their board and the marker, and they start drawing whatever they might want to draw that will possibly get you to guess the thing. Okay, it's going to be a noun or a title. Let's see, so as soon as someone's done, they put down their board and they claim the cylinder. Okay, they are first and the cylinder gets to remind them and everyone else of that. Next player puts down their board and then they start rolling the die. And as soon as they roll the stop symbol on the die, then everyone else has to finish drawing, put down their boards immediately. Okay, so far so good. The player who finished first will show their image to the guesser. So you look at this, you have a single guess to make. If it's within the ballpark, they're gonna take it. If you say vacuuming and it's actually vacuum, that's fine. It's all the sort of standard party rule games where you have to determine what is actually a proper guess or not. So if you guess incorrectly, well, then this stays face up and it provides information for when you look at my drawing. And if you guess mine correctly, well, then we both score. If I get, if you don't guess mine, well, then everyone else will show their drawings, no matter how many people there are in the game. And hopefully for you, you're going to guess that one. Now, each time you guess correctly, you get a point and the person who drew the thing you guessed gets a point. So if you guess this first image here, then that player gets a point. Doesn't matter what anyone else drew. If you don't guess, well, then I'll show mine. Hopefully you guess it, I get the point. And if not, well, then all the other people possibly get a point with you and we get punished for being too fast, but sloppy, not giving you enough information to go on to guess what we drew, which I hope you have guessed is queen. Yes, uh, not the princess, but the big person. Okay, and the silhouette, that's it. So race the board, do a new round, see who has the most points and wins. 
There's a quick overview of Doodle Dash, which you might have already known how to play just by looking at the components because it is a very familiar sounding game. I played three times on our view copy from Chili Fox Games, once each with three, four, and seven players. With three players, you play slightly differently. Whoever grabs the cylinder immediately starts rolling the die because there is only one other drawer and you are trying to get them to stop as quickly as you can. Rolling the die can be frustrating because there is a stop sign only on one side. And I understand the reason why you would do something like this. You want to give an indeterminate amount of time in which other people have to draw or have available to draw. So you get this time pressure. They are pushed to move quickly, but you don't know exactly how quickly, but sometimes you just roll and roll and roll and roll and roll and roll. And there's just nothing there similar to a much older game by GameRite called Go Nuts, where it worked the same way, where one person would roll, try to get this one symbol on a side, and just roll, roll, roll. And you're just like, oh my god, just stop. Some people really didn't like that die, uh, such as me, for example. It's just, I understand why it's there, but I kind of want something else. But I'm not sure what I would suggest as well. Anyway, the game design is very familiar. It seems like something you've seen before. But it works well. It does what it's trying to do. It is pushing you to draw quickly. You are potentially rewarded for drawing quickly or you are punished because your drawing is sloppy and someone can't guess it. And you're just giving information that's going to help the next drawer who reveals their clue. So it does exactly what it's supposed to do. The level of clues varies a lot. Sometimes you'll have a word that everyone draws pretty much the exact same thing across the board which seems like the word shouldn't necessarily be something so literal, like telescope, everyone drew the tripod with uh, the, cur the slanted line on it, boom. It was just how quickly could you get that done? But then you have something like uh, crowd surfing. That is very different, where you give a much broader range of possibilities. I mean, sure, you're probably gonna draw a crowd and someone surfing, on that crowd, but how many people and what's the stage like and how's the person doing it and all the little details of how you're doing it are really dressing it up more. Hopefully with the queen image that I had before, you you know there's some elements that are going to be in place with a crown and a hair and probably a dress. Okay, but how do we make sure they don't say princess instead? And that's why I had the two people standing side by side. You know, there's, there's some thought that goes into what the drawer is doing to try to communicate to you. You can't give letters, you can't give numbers, you know, all those sort of standard details. So it works and does what it's supposed to do. And yet it's also just something you've seen before, probably such as, for example, uh, 2019's Decalco, uh, to the, uh, a release by Korean publisher Happy Baobab. Well, that works somewhat similarly in that each player has a drawing sleeve and you're going to take an image. This is double-sided, mind you. You slide it into the card. Can I do this? Can I do this? And now I'm going to trace the image in here as quickly as I can with a marker that works. And as soon as I'm done with my drawing, I grab the topmost scoring card. So the scoring cards go down in value, four, three, two, one. And I take my card out. I put my point total in. I'll just hold it here. And then you have to guess what this is. And if you guess what it is, I will get these points. So I am rewarded for going quickly. I'll have a higher number but of course you might not guess what this is. But if you do guess, you get the card. If you said donuts, you get this card, which is worth two points. So same principle, we're all drawing something individually though, and whoever finishes first potentially gets more points. Now, something even more specific, more similar to Doodle Dash is Picto. This is a game uh, by Japanese designer Chika Suzu. Uh, it was originally released in Japanese in 2011. This version by Cocktail Games came out in 2018. And in this game, 
Again, you have uh, cards with words on them, 12 in this case, and you have a 12-sided die to roll, or you can just give a number from 1 to 12. And everyone gets a card upon which to draw with a dry erase marker. This all seems very familiar so far, right? But uh, let's see what I'm going to draw here. But now you are drawing, and you can draw only straight lines and circles. That's it. Okay. So, mm, mm, mm. all right. And then when you finish, you count the number of lines that you made. So I would count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eleven. I did not necessarily do the best job here. 15, 20. And I write down my number on my board. I put my board down. And then when everyone has finished, because there's one person guessing, everyone else is drawing the same thing, whoever wrote down the smallest number, that is who used the fewest lines, will show their image first to the guesser. So mine is 20. And if someone did six, they're going to show first. And if the person gets it, they eat score points. If not, right, their image is revealed and the next person goes and you'll see this and hopefully you're going to guess what that is. Possibly not good. Again, hard to do this on camera sometimes. But if you get mine, I get a point, you get a point, great. If you don't guess anything, no one gets points. But again, you have added information to the pool each time you're showing things. It works exactly the same way as Doodle Dash, except here you're not rewarded just on pure speed but on efficiency, because you can take as long as you want and you're rewarded based on the fewest lines. So I took that game to school a lot when I was running a game club at my son's school and kids dug it. They loved it. Uh, it was a little hard to do because the cards are in French, so I'd have to like translate what the, the thing is for them. But it was great seeing them confronted with something like basketball and trying to do it as minimalistic as possible because of course you could just do a sphere and say one but then you have to just hope that person says basketball rather than any other possible round thing there and then next person if they have a circle with a line on it maybe that'll do it All right it's it's another interesting element similar to the doodle dash where you have some agency in how you want to present something to the guesser to try to get it across but uh, aside from some of the details, they feel almost identical. Okay, we've got three things so far. So, Norwegian company, uh, Korean company, French company. Have you seen any of these games on your shelf? I don't know if you have. Uh, definitely not this one because I don't think it's been officially released yet. But you probably haven't seen them in particular. Or, wait a minute, let me just do one more. Pix. It's a party game for four to nine players from Gameworks that works very similarly to everything we've shown before, except it uses pixels. You are not drawing, you're getting this board, which is actually magnetized, and these pixels stick to it. And you have one red pixel, and you have an arrow, and there'll be a certain number of people on each team. So it might just be the black team versus the gray team, where everyone on the black team is going to look at the same word and make the same drawing, and whoever uses the fewest pixels will show their image first, with the red being four, this being two, and everything else being one. So whoever has the lowest sum shows their image. If someone on the gray team guesses it, great, you score. If not, well then the next player on your team will show theirs, which is again more detailed. And you've heard all this before. I'm explaining the same game three times with how this works, all right? So, I don't know. It's not about being new necessarily. It's about a game being available on the shelves for you to potentially play. If you don't have access to these games, uh, like I do because I'm reviewing games and talking about them and publishers send me samples so that I can do such things, well then you're not gonna see them. But you will probably see some fast drawing game on your shelf. And it's just about, does it work or not? Does it deliver the experience? If you haven't seen any of these other ones, doesn't matter. If the game delivers the experience that you want, then that's the game for you. So 
So it's, it's really interesting just looking at design in this abstract way where, of course, you have the design, which isn't necessarily new, but you also have just the marketing of it to potential players. And how does it actually reach people? How do you find out about it? And how can you get your hands on it? There's all these other elements that come into play in the game industry. I love looking at all that sort of stuff while also talking about the designs themselves. So now you know how this game works along with three others. And there's probably plenty of other ones I have not talked about. So you've got a wide range of quick drawing party games to compare. Hopefully you find something that you like should that type of game be to your taste.